Hey, what's up guys? Welcome indeed to the first 30 minutes of Torchlight 3's gameplay as well as a overview and kind of an introduction to this action RPG. So uh, I've had a lot of people ask, you know, how is this game? You know, what are my thoughts on it? We'll kind of answer that and kind of answer the question, is this game worth picking up for you? Because everyone obviously likes different things. So first off, these are the class choices. I'm going to go ahead and move my camera out of the way over here. Uh, so these are the class options. Um, I'm not sure if they're planning to release more classes later down the line. I hope that this game does get some more support laid down the line with more DLC and other stuff. But here's what we have for our class options. We have the Sharpshooter, we have the Desk Mage, we have the Forge, and we have the Railmaster. They all kind of have their own unique mechanic for resource or mana, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Sharpshooter, and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys uh, there are different um, ways to kind of build them. So we have Sharpshooter, and uh, we have more finite ways to kind of go over them uh, in terms of our build tour. So we have precision over here, which is more of like our standard like ranged class. And then we also have adventurer, which has these little pets and other debuffs that we can activate as well. And then next up, moving on to the next class, which is the dusk mage. They have a light and dark system that they kind of try to balance. So you have light and you have dark. You actually kind of want to hybrid them as that will benefit you a little bit more because they will give you some buffs. And then on top of that, uh, there's also a unique mechanic called a relic which we'll go ahead and hop right into but the next class is the forge we have more of a ranged oriented build for uh this guy over here he's kind of like a little mechanical guy um in terms of a, a class stun he's actually kind of a, a really cool system it was implemented when they designed him with this like heat that you would build up and then you would kind of expend it and then we have the rail master which is the uh class that can actually have a train. It's actually a really cool uh, concept as well. Again, they all feel pretty unique, I would say, as I have played all of the classes uh, over on the PTR that let us go ahead and test out a lot of different stuff. And uh, during the earlier stages of the game and the development, we also maxed out and we did play Endgame uh, with some of the classes. I, I got to Endgame with Dust Mage as well as Sharpshooter. But anyways, for our first little session over here, we're gonna go ahead and hop right in to the uh, Dusk Mage. Then we'll go ahead and show you guys the uh, character creation. I'll go ahead and cycle through a few of the different presets over here just so you guys can kind of see some of the variety in the hairstyles and the options that you do have and the uh, items that you equip will change the way that the character looks this was something that was kind of newer in the game like we can now actually change the hair color which uh, i think is a cool um, change over here so let's go ahead and create our uh, first character um from the newer patch with the Dusk Mage. Now I did briefly play last night uh, to kind of test out and get a feel for the game. Now, every class uh, will be able to select the exact same relics, but you can only choose one. This is a system that did get changed later down the line before you could swap to any relic that you wanted to. You can actually get a max relic and put it on a level one character, but uh, you can no longer uh, do that. They're picked at the start. So this is basically a separate skill tree. One uh, criticism that this game did receive heavily by the community was its lack in the amount of the um, diversity department via the skill tree, because basically each class has two skill trees. Each one of the skill trees has seven skills and you will be able to get to 70 skill points. And you might be thinking, well, I just can go ahead and just like max out, um, you know, all, all the trees. Well, there's this uh, new relic system in place where um, you're gonna have to level this up if you want to, I recommend leveling up. So we have, we have poison, we have like a bleed, we have a freeze and we have electrocute and we have a fire build. I won't go over every single one. They are mostly the same in the sense where uh, a lot of them will be having the exact same effect, but it'll be like via flame. So uh, for example, we might be able to burn an enemy, or we can go ahead and make the enemy do uh, a bleed damage over time. So they're kind of the same. I mean, if you look at this, uh, it says that uh, blood drinker slices to the bone, giving you a 5% chance to bleed enemies for 50% weapon damage for 3 seconds. But if we go over here, this is basically the same thing. It's a 5% chance to burn enemies for 50% weapon damage for three seconds. Literally pretty much the same, but you also get an evasion with this. So there are some small changes, but they are kind of relatively the same in some aspects. And the last one for most of them is to like recharge our um, energy uh, for our relic, which is a separate resource that we will have to manage if we decide to even put points into it, because you could just forego it completely, but I probably wouldn't recommend that. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and go with fire, and we're going to go ahead and hop right in and uh, play the game. And I'll give you guys uh, some uh, you know, uh, introduction to the game as far as uh, mechanics, 
uh, what makes this game different than any other action RPG. But let's go and hop right in. Um, the pet that you choose doesn't matter. Uh, it's just a skin over here. So we go ahead and change the color of the um, pet. Don't worry, you'll be able to get more pets later uh, as the game progresses. Um, so if you go up harder in difficulty, you can get more gear luck. So think of it like magic fine. And then we also have potion luck and then the monsters will move faster. Those are the changes here. For the sake of the playthrough, I'm going to do it on normal, but I have done it on the hardest difficulty at the end game uh, via the uh, earlier access uh, forms of the game. But to answer the question really short, is this game for you? If you're looking for a super in-depth action RPG like Path of Exile, it's probably not going to satisfy that itch. If you're looking for a very light casual game, I could say that if you're okay with kind of completing the campaign and then exploring a little bit of the end game, uh, it can definitely be there for, I think, some people if you want to spend, you know, 20-ish hours into a game and you're satisfied. Um, but if you're looking to spend hundreds and thousands of hours into this game, it might not satisfy that for everyone. Again, your mileage may vary. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip out on all of the dialogue. However, I will watch all the cutscenes that uh, do pop up for the game. But um, in terms of the audio department, like if we're kind of giving uh, a brief little day one review, and I have already completed the game multiple times, but it's just because now it's considered in full launch. The biggest change though is really that the game actually functions uh, because before it would have tremendous amount of server stability. That was a huge reason why a lot of people um, just stopped playing the game. Uh, the servers were absolutely terrible, but it was an early access. That's something that obviously wasn't intentional. There's sometimes things that happen in games where like it's totally not intentional, like a huge bug or people are duping or something that like, you know, it wasn't originally designed to have that. Now they also have single player. That was a, a thing that a lot of people wanted to go ahead and add uh, into the game. But I believe you still have to like log in, but then you can play offline. Uh, in terms of the game stability and the rubber banding, um, I, I did play briefly uh, last night for a few hours. Um, we actually have a sharpshooter. Got a few legendaries, uh, just kind of progressed in the game a little bit. Uh, the game still definitely has issues. I mean, if you go check out the Steam reviews, because I, I know a lot of people from the first impressions, they want to know, like, you know, what what's uh, changed with the game since its earlier access. It's gotten a way better, but there are still issues where things don't spawn in correctly. Um, you will definitely rubber band a little bit. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of lag. Uh, as the game has just launched, I'm more forgiving with like maybe a little bit of server stability. Um, I'd want it to be perfect because, you know, that was a huge part of um, the early access and why a lot of people were upset about the game. And I totally get it. Uh, but at the end of the day, even if that gets fixed, I don't think people that want like a very deep action RPG uh, can spend thousands of hours in this game. Unless, of course, the modding community adds a lot more to it, which is something I'm really looking forward to with Torchlight 3, is to see if the modders will take control over the game and really deliver a more in-depth experience for the players that do want that. But sometimes when you introduce too many mechanics to uh, a player, they can be super overwhelmed. Like. With Path of Exile, I shared the skill tree with one of my friends, and she was like, no, nah, I'm not even, I don't even want to touch that game. It was just too confusing. So if you want, like, a very lighthearted game, this game actually has a lot of blood in it, um, surprisingly. But, um, yeah, uh, if you want, like, a very lighthearted action RPG that could be, like, a good entry uh, point for, like, your, your starting uh, out, um, this could be a game to, to consider, but we have one skill point to go and put a, a skill point into. I'm going to go ahead and put a point into the Sword Smash just so we can uh, make use of the Relic. So let me go and show you how this works. So this is a bar that will be able to be built up. So it says damage monsters to gain Relic Energy, uh, spend it using Relic Skills. So this is the Relic. So every class has basically another skill tree, um, which I think is a kind of a cool idea. I liked it previously before where you didn't have to spend your skill points for your class. It, it would just level up on its own, which I thought was a better mechanic and, and actually was uh, better because you would have more skill points. But um, in terms of um, that, there's also something I want to mention that's similar to Diablo 3, um, which is similar to the Kanai's Cube. So they're called the Legendariums. We'll, we'll unlock this at level three. But what it is is basically any legendary that we've gotten, uh, we're gonna be able to go ahead and just have the legendary ability. Um, and then in addition to that, um, we'll go ahead and check out if we got an item that has more damage as um, 
we can just simply do more damage. Uh, so one thing that I do like with this game, so I'm kind of going to go ahead and answer the question of like, you know, what does this action RPG do new for the genre? Because that's always something that I'm looking forward to with any action RPG as I'm a content creator that does a lot of Path of Exile, Diablo, I like action RPGs. And I would say that what this game did um, in terms of something that's new is you can use any skill with any weapon. So like if I was to use a uh, a sword, I could still use my bow abilities, which I actually prefer. So you can just basically pick up whatever weapon that I want. Uh, the relic system, I guess, is kind of new, but uh, at the end of the day, they're very similar to one another, uh, I would say. Um, the, the electric one used to be really insane, and you could have over 100% crit at all times, pretty much, if you were able to get enough cooldown. Um, that has been nerfed. There's been a lot of changes to the game uh, since some of the earlier iterations of it. Things probably have gotten buffed and nerfed in different departments, but um, what does this uh, really offer that's new? Uh, I would say that if you're looking for something completely new, because the Legendarium... Uh, Thing is cool i like it but it's already been shown off in diablo so here here we'll have a bunch of different ones that we'll have at the start like you get these i'm not sure if it's because i played in the uh, earlier access that i have some of these unlocked but it, when i first started uh the early access these were already unlocked anyways um you might not have like woods beast gloves because like i said i played the, the game for a few hours just because i wanted to check out server stability um before hopping back into the game. Originally, I was gonna plan to do a full playthrough, but right now I'm just gonna do like an introduction to the game and then I'll show you guys more end game content uh, later down the line. So if you are new here and you do wanna check that out, subscribe to the bell and you'll see more Torchlight 3 content. As I do wanna just kinda of see if they've really changed anything. But as far as the end game goes, it's basically uh, maps from PoE. You just go ahead and go to these dungeons and they'll, they'll have some type of modifier that you can select from a few of them and you'll have some type of negative effect, but you'll obviously have better rewards as you progress. I'm gonna go ahead and select Quicksilver because that just grants us extra movement speed. So in terms of an action RPG, there's a lot of things that I would consider backwards and just a little bit different for, I guess the reason they're just being different. Huge, huge thing that um, I just don't understand why this is in the game. You cannot bind your left click to move only. Uh, I think that that's such a backwards decision for an action RPG in this day and age. Um, you do not have movement speed uh, affixes that can roll uh, on boots. You can have it as legendarium, but I just think that I would really like to see that be just a modifier in boots. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, because one of the guys that worked on this game did work on Diablo 2, I, I feel bad because so many uh, part of the criticisms are like, Diablo 2 had this, why doesn't this game have it? I, I, I get it. I. But the, the specific thing that I think is just so backwards in an action RPG in terms of game design is that you need movement speed as a modifier on your boots in an action RPG. It, it just should be a thing. Um, unless they have, they have actually added that. Because again, I, I completed the entire game multiple times uh, over on um, the earlier access variants of this game. And, uh, I just think that it should exist. Oops, uh, we actually have to go ahead and actually finish this quest up over here. But in that, we probably got some new items to go ahead and equip. And I can still cast all of my skills. Um, let's go ahead and get uh, uh, another skill over here. We'll get a dark skill. Uh, we have one skill point above. We'll put it into dark spears. So the first quest is just to go ahead and activate these things on the mini-map. You'll see one thing that I, I did notice, and I, I'm noticing it again still, um, is there are sometimes quest markers where, like, the, you see where, like, that, that thing just disappears. I don't know why the quest markers disappear. So in terms of bugs, um, that one's like minor, but it is kind of annoying. There's also times where you will go into an uh, underground area and the map will kind of be messed up. So this game definitely is not like, in what I would consider finalized and perfect, no. There are still times where bosses won't spawn in. You could check the forums um, or you can check over on Steam right now. Those things, they're annoying. Is the game still uh, what I would consider playable? Uh, a lot more playable than it used to be because uh, there were times where you'd go back, to, you'd hit your town portal, and you would warp to a completely different location. <laughs> like, those things aren't intentional. Uh, you still can go to other people's, like, um, what's kind of like a hideout if you play Path of Exile. That mechanic um, still exists. I'm not sure why they have that mechanic implemented in the game. I think it's just so you see other people in the game, if that makes any sense. Uh, as this game was originally designed to be a free-to-play game, but that recently changed. Here's our uh, other ability for the uh, level up where the uh, spears just come out of the ground. It's kind of a cool ability. But it's a it's a very light action RPG. Um, 
Like, I would say this is a really cool game if you're, like, looking for a game to play for a little bit of time, maybe on the Switch or something. I could definitely see this game being appealing to uh, more of the casual audience. But, again, to answer the question, is it worth picking up? I think, it, I mean, okay, so let's go over, like, the pros of the games, and let's go ahead and go over the cons of the game. So, the pros of this game, it's got Matt Ullman. He's the guy that did uh, the Diablo soundtrack from the previous Diablo games. I think he did a fantastic job in the audio department. In terms of the smoothness of the game, it's pretty decent. Like, things function properly for the most part in action RPG. And if you've played a lot of other action RPGs, uh, maybe even earlier access, well, this game had a lot of issues with lag, but lag aside, the game feels, like, pretty decent. Like, in, in terms of it being relatively responsive on, like, the abilities, the abilities, like, uh, function properly. But in terms of depth, I would like to see a lot more. Um, even in the Legendary department, uh, let me go ahead and actually show you guys the Legendarium um, department, because I was really hoping that each class would get several different sets. Uh, but it basically is, you have a few Legendaries um, for each class, and then you have basically a Legendary set, like one set. Um, how the legendaries work in this game, they're a little bit different. Hopefully we'll get one. If not, I can swap to another character and show you guys uh, how that mechanic works. But I just want to show you like, guys like the introduction to the game, as well as like the, the mechanics over here. Um, but in addition to the level up system where you would just get a, a skill, you also can put more skill points, and you'll see where it says uh, tier 1 bonus, which requires 2 more skill points. Every third cast fires a larger bolt that deals 50% more damage. There's also a tier 2 bonus that says 20% light skill damage. Now, um, how that works is that will increase everything, even in uh, another department, if it just said flat damage or cooldown reduction or something like that. Like this one is 30% damage for basic attacks. I don't even have to have that skill equipped or I have to attack with this ability first to activate that. And I think it's kind of a cool idea on their tree uh, over here. But uh, I just want to go ahead and, like I said, do a little short introduction uh, to the game. And then I'm going to go ahead and swap to another character so I can go ahead and show you guys, like, more skills and stuff. And give you guys a little bit of variety in uh, my introduction to the game. But I wanted to go ahead and start off with the character creation so you guys can see, like, the very first level. Basically, you just go back to town and then you'll kind of progress here. But uh, this isn't, like, super late game. But I have played late game, so I feel like I can speak on, like, uh, some of the gameplay mechanics. So this is a sharpshooter. It's the, like, ranger class, if you will. We're just going to go ahead and teleport over here. We'll kill some stuff, and I'll show you you guys uh, how this um, class works but yeah as far as the pros go um, it is technically a newer action RPG so like I'm always looking forward to seeing new gameplay mechanics but I would consider this a con it doesn't really add anything new to the action RP genre that hasn't already been designed like the end game maps that's already been done before and it's kind of how actually most action RPGs are going to be going forward um, I don't think there is a loot filter in this game which is kind of something most of the times you'll pick up things to level up your tree um, which is a mechanic that will give you some magic find out. This is on ridiculous difficulty, although it's not really that much harder. Let me go and actually show you this phase beast over here, which will go ahead and open up a door to a uh, little bo boss mechanic. And I'll show you guys the boss over here. So, you'll see that this is a phase dungeon portal. It'll open a phase boss fight area level plus one. We have 100% life brown scroll luck revive in a town over here. So we'll go and hop in. I'll show you guys like a little boss. A lot of times you'll fight the same boss over and over again and it gets kind of repetitive to the point where some people just aren't interested in doing these. But they can have sometimes okay rewards. It's just it takes a while to kill some of these guys as they have a very large HP pool. So I'm going to show you guys. Uh, this is basically kind of like a most reminds me of like a righteous fire. So it's just a, a fire AoE. It's one of my um, other skills that I have with my fire run. But, um, yeah, I hope that this game can get a lot of support from the modding community. Uh, and again, that's because I simply just want more depth to my game. But some people don't want that much depth in their game. They're happy with the way that the, the game is in terms of, like, they want it simple. And I, and I get that. Um, that's something that uh, a lot of people did or didn't like with Diablo 3. They felt like it was too simple, they wanted rune words, they wanted a lot more content. And I feel like for me, the more content that the game has, the better, um, regardless if I interact with that content or not. Uh, whether it's a league mechanic or um, a, um, a way to kind of engage in some type of late game content. As again, this game's late, ca uh, late game content is just maps. With a, a modifier. But we'll go ahead and eliminate him. You'll see we're just doing a lot of crit. Um, this, the plan for this build. Uh, actually, we're getting kind of low on HP. Hopefully, 
to manage to take him out. And I didn't notice we were out of, out of potions here. Um, in this game, you don't have unlimited potions. They are drops. Uh, but you can buy them in town too, and I'll show you guys the town, and I'll show you guys more mechanics. I just want to go ahead and defeat like a boss so you can see what the rewards look like for this. But I mean, the, the boss is relatively easy, well at least this is like the, this is an earlier boss. And it obviously will get a little bit more complex as you progress. Okay, nice, we got a potion over here. Throw that on. So if I have this uh, ghost thing up, it'll make it so he, no one can target me. But if I already activate my relic, uh, it's awesome because it's still going to do the relic damage uh, in the little like circle that's uh, around us. Yeah, we'll go ahead and eliminate this boss, and then I'll show you guys the town. Watch out for some of the uh, mechanics of like dodge. Don't stand where there's like a, a vibrant color, basically. We should probably need to pop a pop-up potion pretty soon. As, uh, if I get hit once once more, we could rip. Uh, as we're playing on ridif ridiculous difficulty uh, for the, the extra magic fine. But honestly, I mean, it might just be in the early game, but I feel like you can definitely just play on normal and you'll be totally fine in terms of like getting better gear. It's just, I like the challenge. I'll also show you uh, another mechanic called Lifebound. this massive damage and if we teleport we'll get extra crit chance when we're like in this ghost form and they also can't target us which is really nice except for I guess the boss can target you regardless but you can see they, they are pretty tanky um, until we get our like 100% crit then we'll start melting things um, this video is obviously not like a build guide, but I do have a sharpshooter build uh, that I'll pin down below in case any of you guys want to check it out. It is absolutely insane. It like deletes bosses in like literally like one second. Potion. He's almost gone. And we got him. All right. So the rewards for doing most areas, including the the uh, like dungeons and stuff. You'll basically get um, a loot from the boss. You'll get a boss chest over here, which let's see if we get no no legendary parts. But I do have some legendaries already, and then you'll also get a pet. Now that, let me go and show you the pet mechanic because they also we're just going to set this pet home. So um, obviously we have different skills because we're playing a different class here because this is introduction uh, to the game. But um, we also have a uh, separate. Um, amount of skills that we can go ahead and equip onto our pet. We'll unlock more as we progress. But you can have uh, three pet skills and one pet aura. And uh, for me, the best one is the 15% increased critical strike chance uh, to uh, nearby allies, which is awesome. So you can go ahead and basically kind of have a little bit more play with some of the skills. This is just for the pet uh, itself. Um, you cannot activate these. Uh, all that. It's not on your skill bar, it's just on there. And if you want to change your skills, you can go ahead and just click and then select any skill that you want. We did get more skills. This is something that was introduced into when they updated the relics. There's also a contract system. Let's go ahead and go into. Um, so as you progress, if you want to think of it kind of like a battle pass, as this game was originally designed as a free-to-play game, um, that is uh, another mechanic that is in the game. But we're going to go ahead and actually just teleport back to town. So we'll leave this little like dungeon area. Um, and then we're going to go and go back to town. So instead of just making a portal, it opens up this thing. Do you want to go to your fort, which is kind of like your hideout, or you can go back to the uh, town. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the fort uh, because I think it's a cool idea. There's a lot of cool things that you can do with the uh, fort. It's kind of like a hideout in Path of Exile where you can basically uh, build up your own area in the game and um, kind of modify it, um, I don't know if they're going to have any microtransactions in this game, as it was originally designed for a free-to-play game, but that it changed, originally named it Tor Torchlight Frontiers. Um, but you can see we can go ahead and go over here, we can uh, respec out of a skill. So if I put a bunch of skill points into something and I change my mind, I can respec. However, you cannot change the relic. That was something that changed, I think it was right here. This is a, um, a cosmetic item that I believe you got if you played in the previous um, version of like the alpha or something. I don't know sure which exact one. We also have this tree that we can feed loot. And if we go and feed loot, let me see if I got anything better real quick though. Um, okay, we're just gonna go and feed this thing over here. So we're gonna go ahead and sacrifice these things to the tree. And this tree will eventually blossom and be a very, very large um, 
and go and feed it legendary you'll see it'll give a lot more uh, as we progress in it you'll see over here we have gear lock think of that like magic find in the game we also have a pet shelter where we can go ahead and select whatever pet that we want the pets different pets Technically, when you unlock a pet, you'll have a different ability, but you can have any pet have any of the abilities in the game, um, which is kind of cool. But um, in terms of the the pets, I think that they they could have made a, a different mechanic where like certain like classes would have different skills. I think that would be kind of a cool idea, and just so there's a little bit more of a decision uh, with the pets in the pet department. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some of the legendaries that we have acquired. I've got a few more in my stash, but um, anyways. You'll see that the item over here on hit, we have a 2% chance to gain Goblin Rage for 10 seconds, granting immunity stun and knockback, increasing critical uh, chance and attack speed by 25%, uh, which is really cool. And then if we have two or more Wood Beast items, uh, we get a bonus where Goblin Rage duration is increased to 20, so that can be a, obviously a benefit. It's almost like a legendary that has an ability, but it's increased by having more in the same set. Now, we also have the Wood Beast Gloves over here. So if I want to go ahead and equip these, this would make it so if we, uh, when hit below 25% uh, help, we gain immunity to fire and goblin damage for 5 seconds. How it kind of works in terms of the resistances, it's like act 1 is fire, then the next act is like another element, we have like poison and then electric damage. Uh, so those are the the mechanics of kind of how resistance works. It's not just like you just try to max out all res. It's kind of difficult to do that. You basically try to put it into the area that you are currently in, or you'll have different gear pieces. And you do happen to have like the uh, armory where you're able to go ahead and swap your entire equipment. You can go ahead and just swap different pieces of gear whether you roll on like the end game map like if it's like a certain like a a map that would have let's say like fire enemies or whatever you can swap between it uh, that's the idea i know for a lot of people they don't want to look at the map then re re gear up but i think that that's kind of it's, it's a hassle especially since the game is oriented around being like super super casual with literally seven skills for two skill trees it's very I would say underwhelming to also then have a mechanic where it's more like advanced for the players that do want it. I guess you could say that for the people that do want that, there's more depth with, I guess, requiring you to have multiple pieces of entire sets of gear to go ahead and combat whatever elemental type that you're dealing with. Uh, but there are also other legendaries that will proc on like, let's say like basic attack, we can go and equip this. Oh, since this was a bow build, we have a uh, staff right now, right? But we can still use bow attacks and it just swaps the uh, skin uh, to that. But if I happen to have this bow over here, you'll see that it will use this bow skin for that ability. So this is one thing I do like with the game. I think it's cool that you can run, I want to say any, there might be one exception to, with a little like mechanical guy, but um, you could pretty much run like you can run a great sword and still use bow skills. I think that's kind of cool, but I don't think that's like next gen or like uh, game breaking enough in the action RPG genre to be like, wow, this is so cool. And uh, I could recommend this game to people because of that like cool mechanic. I think the coolest mechanic honestly is the legendarium, but it's literally the Kanai's cube from Diablo without even requiring to get it. I think that this should be something that you go on a really cool quest and you unlock it uh, versus just like you just have it at the start of the game. Yeah, you get more unlocks as you progress, but I think this is such a cool mechanic that they should really show that off a little bit more uh, in the game's um, development. But um, uh, this is, I guess, kind of like the newer game mechanic with Torchlight 3 is basically the system where they implemented in the uh, relics. And again, you cannot change your relic. Uh, I think you should be able to uh, later down the line uh, as a mechanic. Like that would be a good mechanic that they would introduce into the game because I think not being able to swap into it kind of sucks because you have a passive skill that is only going to work on a very specific weapon. So this one over here works with a great weapon or a bow. It's not like if you want to use this, you if you want to play like um, bow that you have to go fire, but it's just that like, uh, it's kind of something that like, maybe someone really likes the idea of going for like that relic, but they see that the passive only works with a very specific weapon. It could discourage them or maybe they're like, oh dude, I went the wrong build or something. But honestly, it's usually procking on normal attacks anyways. So like this one, basic attacks have a chance to do this. Um, the other ones are basically the same. It's just procking like, you know, electric or cold or poison. They're very similar at the end of the day. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. But I think fire right now is really strong because uh, again, you get a lot more modifiers on like chance to hit to burn. And then on top of that, if they die while they're on fire, they can explode and do more damage. That's why I like fire. But anyways, um, let's go ahead and hop back into town. Um, interesting enough, like when you go, uh, if I want to go back, I can basically uh, go to the travail point. But if I click over here, I'm going to go ahead and move my cam out of the way. You'll see that like I can go back to my town portal. It's a really backwards mechanic, not to just, why not just have the portal that we can click on? Like for an action RPG, 
like I said, I know this is, I'll sound like a broken record, but there's so many mechanics that were introduced into Diablo 2. This game, I'm just like, why didn't you just like use the same mechanic? It doesn't need to be changed uh, with like, okay, you have to open up this to go back to your portal. Um, this interface, um, a lot of people were like, they wanted this game to be mobile. That's why like everything's so simple and stuff. And I think that the honest reason is probably because they wanted this to run on the Switch, but I just don't get why their portal isn't there, right? Uh, again, maybe that's their plan. It makes it, like, looking at the interface, this, it reminds me very much of a mobile game where you kind of have these little, like, progression systems. But in terms of the actual gameplay, does it feel like a mobile game? Not really. Since you have to buy the game, they don't, like, throttle you either uh, in the game. Uh, but, yeah, we'll go ahead and go back to the travail point. Which will be the uh, the town um, that we'll go ahead and get to, but um, as far as criticisms from the, the the beta or the alpha or the early access, whatever you want to call it, because I played in several of the other ones, um, I think the game is okay at the end of the day for like a casual audience. Um, but if you're looking for something deep, it just doesn't have it for you. You're better off looking at like Last Epoch, or uh, maybe uh, on the lookout for maybe Wilson's new update over there if you played that. But I can recommend Path of Exile for sure um, because that game's free. Also, by the way, this game did raise its price. It's forty dollars as originally it was thirty dollars uh, that would grant you early access that granted you the full game. Anyways, so what you do with gold in this game, and if you're wondering, like, um, I don't think you can trade in the game, uh, which is another thing that I just feel like it's so backwards in an action RPG. You should be, I feel like you should be able to, to have like some type of auction house or like a, uh, a PoE dot trade variant. Uh, I know the game just came out, but like these are all systems that should be implemented in an action RPG that's coming out in 2020. You should have movement speed modifiers on your boots. Um, like in terms of what you are buying, this is basically just uh, RNGing for loot. It's just like a uh, geed, if you will. Um, you can get legendaries off of this, but um, I'm just going to go ahead and save it because I, I don't really need to get anything now. Uh, but like, this is just basically purchasing items. It's just a random weapon in, let's say, a certain genre. Unfortunately, uh, if you go for 2 and a weapon, it will. Uh, they should make it so like there's like bows specifically because I know some people specifically want to go ahead and use bows or something because there could be modifiers maybe on that department. But um, that's what you would do with your gold in the game. And uh, let's go ahead and see if there's anything else I want to go ahead and go over. So you can see that... Well, well, you can, you can have, you can invite your um, Steam friends and stuff. So the game does have multiplayer. I did play multiplayer uh, back in the alphas and stuff, um, and it, it does function. Uh, but I, I really think that they should have some type of auction house or some type of, like, implemented trade system in the game. And uh, I think that this game has a little bit of potential, I would say, uh, maybe later down the line for some of the players that do want things. I mean, remember looking at Diablo 2 Vanilla versus LOD, like, that added so much. The thing that I'm kind of worried about with this game in terms of like if I'm kind of giving you guys like some feedback on uh, your decision making and purchasing the game, I hope this game gets a new expansion pack uh, that will revamp up the game, add like another skill tree for every single class. Um, I think what they really should have done honestly is made it so you can basically select a subclass that would give you one out of two of the other trees for a different class because then people would stop complaining about there's only seven skills in the skill tree, which I get it. Torchlight. Uh, two had 10 skills across three trees where this game is two skills across uh, or, uh, uh, Two skill trees across seven skills. I understand there's a lack of content for some people in that department uh, but I, I still think that this game was fun for the entire campaign. In fact, we did a full campaign playthrough if you guys would like to check it out. Uh, I'll pin it down below also. Like, I legitimately had fun for the, um, the, 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 the 10-ish hours that I did play. Oh, look, someone wants me to join their party. Um, there is also voice chat in the game. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and ignore that for now because I just want to go and play it at my own pace. Um, but, like, looking at the feedback that people are saying from the community, I'm going to pop open up the Steam page right here. It's at a 48%. And, like, for me, I'm just super blown away because I feel like, you know, you have someone that worked on Diablo 2. And, again, I'm sorry. I hold Diablo 2 to such a high standard to, to where I feel like, Someone that worked on Diablo 2, how do you make a game that gets 48%? Um, and if you, like, they, I feel so bad. But, like, the guy was celebrating, and the Twitter feed, like, because he's like, guys, the game's fine now, because this game just came out. That's why we're making this, like, uh, introduction to the game and, like, impressions of the game after it launched. And he was really excited, and the comments were like, dude, bro, why are you celebrating? The game is, still needs to be fixed. 
So the game has issues. The game still has a little bit of lag. I'm kind of forgiving on that because we're looking at like day one launch, uh, but it's way better than it was in the early access. The early access was rubber band nightmare. You would just constantly just keep on teleporting back. It's not like that anymore. In fact, like I played for a few hours uh, last night. We had a boss that didn't spawn in and we had a couple times where rubber banded, but it was, it was like maybe two or three times uh, in like two hours, two or three hours. And I, I can deal with that. Before it was like every like 30 seconds, you would, you would feel it. So in that department, it's not that bad. Uh, but in terms of depth, it's still lackluster in my personal opinion. And uh, a 48% definitely makes people go, whoa, there's something way wrong with this game. And I feel like it's just because so many people are upset that it's it's not, it's not Diablo 2 standards. <laughs> at the end of the day and I, I get it you hold you hold that game to a very high standard like myself but I still had fun playing this game I'll, this is not sponsored I think that if you're interested in maybe like a 10-15 hour uh, game experience for an action RPG and you're you like super casual stuff this could be fun to best round with with a, like a weekend with a buddy and then that's it um, but if you're looking for thousands of hours, I don't see myself spending thousands of hours in this game. But that's me personally. So there's my little introduction uh, to the game and my first impressions of like day one of official launch. But I've played the entire game, and so like I feel like I can I can release a video kind of going over a review. I might make like another in-depth review after we beat the entire game all over again. Um, so I, I did see some of the cutscenes in the game. It's still basically just pictures, and it kind of slowly pans towards it. Um, before I was thinking that those cutscenes would be fully fleshed out but that's just the way the game is um before like obviously the, the whole black and white like stick figures that's been changed those were placeholders for of course the actual game but uh in terms of like the cutscenes i don't care about cutscenes i'm just I'm, i want to i want the gameplay to be really good and in terms of like the depth over here because we're looking at equipment right They've removed rings. Uh, I guess this is supposed to kind of be like you get two pet tags and pet collar, but I think you should just have the game have the rings, maybe the pet, like the, like each individual pet has its own skill and then that would be like another thing that we would have as an equip versus giving some items to the pet over here. I really don't like that mechanic. Also, the, going over legendaries uh, over here. So you can actually check out all the legendaries in the game. You just go ahead and open up the skills for the legendarium and you can see all the things. So each class... Um, I already kind of went over like what the legendaries do, but um, basically each class has one set. You don't have to equip all of them, but like basically what it comes down to is like you can get plus to skill points in like one set of the skill tree versus to all skills uh, in Diablo 2, which and again, this is another criticism for the game. It's like just make a plus to all skills, uh, but it doesn't really matter. This game is, is definitely uh, oriented around more casual play, but there's also a, a thing that's way more hardcore um, in the consumables called the life bound. So this item that I have is uh, a rare bow, but I'm gonna go ahead and actually show you guys what happens when we make it life bound over here. So now it deals 33 damage instead of the 27, and now it's life bound. So it's 20% to the stats, but item is lost on death. So if you die, it's like hardcore, it's deleted. Not our character, you can play in a hardcore by the way, but um, yeah, I just wanted to go ahead and mention that mechanic. This is more of a hardcore mechanic. So they implemented like some hardcore mechanics in what I would consider a super casual game. I'm not sure why they did that. They Before they had items that would make it so it was unlife bound and it would keep the life bound stats, which was awesome. Um, but those were really, really rare uh, towards the very end of the game. But that was a mechanic that was deleted from the game. Um, you can move around with WASD, that's uh, a question, but like uh, that I had also asked and I'm gonna go and answer here. Uh, but on top of that, um, the thing that I, I, that just blows me away with an action RPG in 2020, why can't you left click bound to move? Um, there are just things where like, I would say like if they played like action RPGs, um, they would implement it again. No movement speed modifiers on a boots was just like a huge red flag to me. Like, I just don't get why an action RPG wouldn't have that as a, a prefix or affix or just some modifier. But yeah, I understand you can put the legendary and you can get the, the quicksilver where you get to move 10% uh, more than when you use a potion and get extra movement speed. But like, it should just be like a thing that rolls on boots uh, in terms of game design over here. But uh, anyways ranted long enough you guys can let me know your thoughts down below on it and if you guys uh want to be updated on it i do plan to make another video i'm just going to go ahead and complete the game uh with um i think i'm going to go dust mage i'm not sure i might max out like two characters to give a, a better feedback uh for the game because i want this game to be good i want it to be successful but again a lot of people are like dude why is this game at 48 percent i think it's a little bit low if i was to go ahead and say like is this game really a 48 percent because 48 is pretty low by my standards uh, in terms of like a game review. I, I would say if I was to, I, again, I've only, 
I've already technically completed the game, but um, in my like first experience of like the first hour in, in its original like launch, it still has some problems for sure. But it, it, eventually, I feel like some of the bugs, like the boss not spawning in, the rubber banding, hopefully those will be addressed. If all the things are fixed, I can see the game easily being like, a, I would say maybe a six or a seven out of ten if I was to like give the game a little of a review um, in its current state. Uh, and I just think that it, it's an okay game. Um, it just has a few rough edges that hopefully can be polished out with maybe an expansion pack or if the modding community takes over as Torchlight 2 was awesome with mods. Uh, obviously the game just came out so we're gonna have to wait for the mods but I think this game with an expansion pack or the mod support it can be really awesome but till then maybe hold off on the purchase uh, of the game. But that's my thoughts. You guys can let me know yours down below. But thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like on it. If you're new here, subscribe, turn on the bell for that to see more action RPG content as well as Torchlight 3 content because I'll, I'll grind it out and we'll, we'll see what the um, uh, game feels like uh, on the end game with its live version. I'm guessing it's pretty much the same though. Without the lag though. <laughs> Anyways, take care and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.